Welcome to another scriptural study. We kindly suggest that you put your computer screens on full view. And as always, please feel free to critique these scriptural studies by responding to this YouTube video in the comments section with two or three scriptural witnesses, along with historical, etymological, archaeological, and or astronomical evidence as it relates to the scriptural matter being shared and or respond to our email address in the same manner and or our Facebook page. In this scriptural study, we will explore man's wall clock versus Yahuwah's celestial clock. In this study, we will expose the incredible differences of how the world measures time as compared to our Almighty Father in Heaven, as written in His very Word, let alone what can be physically seen with the human eye, as seen in the heavens originally known as the Shemaim. Why do this, you might ask? Because were any of us given a choice on how to measure time? And or was it forced upon us when we were born? When I became aware from a scriptural point of view that none of us were to have a love of the world, nor that which is in this world as we read in the book of Yehukanan, book 1, chapter 2, verses 15 through 16, and many other scriptural passages, then and only then did I really start to question how the world works which includes the measurement of time as compared to the way Yahuwah measures time. The English word world is translated as cosmos in Greek. The Apostle Yehukanan, known today as John, utilized this word five times in these two short verses as we have just seen on this previous visual. It literally means an orderly arrangement. In other words, it means a system. The Apostle refers to this world's system as a mandated lifestyle and as well includes the present man-made environment of time measurement that has been forced upon us all. The Greek word cosmos helps identify that this present time system on earth established by men is not part and or from the creator Yahuwah, which is extremely easy to prove as being totally non-scriptural. In fact, the world and its system of timekeeping is designed to operate in an opposite manner of how Yahuwah, our Almighty Father in Heaven, measures time. This cannot be a surprise to anyone, though, as the very Word itself reveals to us over and over again that Yahuwah and His thoughts and ways are not like ours. And this includes the incredible differences in how we measure time as compared to how the Almighty does. Let us now explore these incredible differences. As we can plainly see, the world system measures time in a clockwise fashion, with three components that measure time separately, as with a second hand, minute hand, and hour hand. This world's timing system measures 24 hours in a day, which comes to 1,440 minutes and 86,400 seconds in one day. And as everyone knows, when all of these three components are combined, they provide the world and those in it with a method to meet a scheduled appointment. And or for the purpose and intent of the traditions of men with a man-made system utilized to gather people timely on any pagan Gregorian scheduled holy day. But the majority of people were never educated that the heavens and the way they operate are in fact the original clock. And this original celestial clock from Yahuwah himself operates counterclockwise just as the original scriptural Hebrew writings are both written and read from right to left, counterclockwise. Again, the three components of Yahuwah's celestial clock are the sun, 
moon with the stars that all move counterclockwise each second, minute, hour, and day, year after year, as we can see from this view from a computer program called Stellarium, which can be downloaded free of charge. In fact, the view we see here is what will be happening in the next few days for the first day of the 10th month. Better yet, go outside and see this celestial clock for yourself. It is free of charge for those who understand that the calendar that hangs in the heavens indeed has been provided to us by the Father of Lights. So, starting today, go outside looking north because this is exactly what you would see day after day month after month, year after year. Once again, notice the sun, moon, with the stars, all moving in a counterclockwise fashion. Yahuwah's ways are definitely not our ways. So how do we measure hourly time on this celestial clock? Well, it is extremely easy, because the Big Dipper, known as Ursa Major, moves counterclockwise around the stationary star known as the North Star and or Polaris every day in a 24-hour time period. To tell time, look at where the hour hand points to in relation to the reference line. Remember, each 15-degree movement corresponds with the passing of one hour. For this example, we are in the spring time period. So if the hour hand, so to speak, points straight to the top of the celestial clock of Yahuwah, and if the celestial hour hand points 30 degrees to the left of the reference line, as an example, the time would be 2 a.m. in the morning, and so on. For those not aware, in scriptural times, midnight was known as the third watch and the start of the seventh hour. But you might say, how can all of this be scriptural? Yahuwah made it very clear with much more than two or three scriptural witnesses that he determined the number of stars and called them each by name. After all, scripture reveals that Yahuwah is the father of lights and not one single star is missing. Isn't that incredible? So let's just read about what stars Yahuwah named in Scripture to understand how his celestial clock works. In the book of Job, anciently known as Eob, chapter 9, verse 9, the Scriptures speak about the star Ash, which is known as Arcturus today. Its purpose remains with us to this very day, even in dictionaries and encyclopedias. And they all share that its purpose is to help us identify the Big Dipper, known as Ursa Major, which revolves around the stationary North Star known as Polaris. And this is how anyone can pinpoint the center of this celestial clock, which is true north and or Polaris. In fact, the star known as the branch scripturally and or ear of corn known today as Spica was first identified to locate Arcturus. In order to identify both the hour hand and center of the celestial clock of Yahuwah, which is known today again as the star Polaris. Please remember the star Spica. We will come back to it later because it is also a very important marker for this celestial clock. So, quick review. At 12 midnight in the spring, you will see the Big Dipper upside down. The top two stars of the bowl will be pointing to Polaris, true north. And again, for every 15 degrees of movement in a counterclockwise motion, this will represent one hour of time. In the summer, the 12 midnight starting point will be with the bowl of the Big Dipper on its side pointing to true north. And here it is in the fall, let alone the winter. So as an example... If you went out the night before New Moon Day, which will be the pagan day Wednesday, January 11th at midnight, you would have seen the Big Dipper positioned and aligned exactly like it does annually before the first day of the 10th month, helping to identify true north and are the center of the celestial clock 
with the star known as Polaris. And if you stayed outside for the night and into the next day for 24 hours, you would see a full 360 degree rotation of the Big Dipper moving counterclockwise around the stationary star known as Polaris and our true north, the center of the celestial clock. So there indeed was an original timing and navigational piece that man has basically done away with. But why? Because the father of lights and his calendar that hangs in the heavens was designed to guard his lighted time measurement system that revolves around his eternal scheduled spiritual harvest cycle or Moedim, which are, of course, aligned to creation's agricultural harvest cycle. While the calendar and clock that man has created in Babylon hangs on a wall in our world today and was inspired by the father of darkness. And of course this calendar system is tied to world religions, which is intended to establish and guard the traditional appointments of men, which indeed are tied to the world's financial system. No coincidence here. Because man's system keeps everyone like a rat in a maze. 12 months a year, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, with no rest and or renewal in sight and or planned. Because Yahuwah's celestial clock plans out in advance his new moon days, his Sabbath days, and his feast days. We suggest that you stop the video here to review in great detail the obvious differences of both clocks and or calendars. Think, does anyone actually believe for one minute that the Almighty Yahuwah, our Father in Heaven, would ensure he was aligned with man? And are even more ridiculous, do you think man actually wants to be aligned with Yahuwah? Hmm... Because everyone knows that scripturally, a year does not start on January 1st in the dead of winter at 12 midnight in the dark. The word explains with well more than two or three witnesses that the scriptural year starts in the spring in the light when life becomes full and renewed. And in the spring, the very word teaches us how to number our days as we walk in the light, as we can see. And thus why we were fully aware of the first day of the first month in the spring of 2016, when the full moon was 100% illuminated and was aligned in close proximity below the star known anciently as the branch, now known today as Spica. Read about these star names in the book of Yeshayahu or Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2, or chapter 11, verse 1, or Yermiyahu, Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 15, etc. Why is this so significant? Because this star was originally known as Tesemach, which is defined as a branch that budded and or sprouted in the spring and was linked to the sprout or shoot of the Messiah from the Davidic tree. Notice as well the meaning of the star known as Rigi al Awa. And of course, we have perfect celestial harmony of alignment with the sun on the first day of the first month, which is in proximity to the Maseroth Orion, originally known as Cassel. And the middle star of this cluster is named the Lamb, or Hamel, which literally means the Lamb. And if this doesn't blow your mind, then check out what the Maseroth Kima, which is known as Pleiades today, and how the seven stars of this cluster function on the clock. Yes, seven stars. Amazing, isn't it? Isn't this why the Almighty Yahuwah is known as the Father of Lights? As He indeed provides the lighted signs scripturally to identify the first day of the first month and every month of the year. And of course, 
the celestial clock of the stars are indeed in alignment as well in the spring as shared earlier. Because if you were looking north on the night before the new moon day at 20 hundred hours and or 8 p.m. on the pagan day of Thursday, April 21st, 2016, you would have seen this. Yes, indeed, Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, pointing to the North Star or Polaris. And this is what it would look like four hours before midnight in my area. Notice the moon just rising above the horizon at the same time period. Notice the sun just setting below the horizon at the same time period. So as shared earlier, at midnight, this is where this star cluster will be positioned at just before the first day of the first month in the spring. And again, if you were outside at midnight the day before New Moon Day, known before as the start of the seventh hour for the third watch for the first day of the first month, it's what you would have seen in the heavens or Shemaim with the Big Dipper and it pointing to Polaris known as the True North or the North Star. And so, on the pagan day of Friday, April 22nd, 2016, in the spring at sunrise, which was approximately 6.22 a.m. from my location, you would have observed the full moon being 100% illuminated ready to set in the west below the horizon, but not until it greets the sun, because the sun announces new moon day as it rises above the horizon. And this is what you would have witnessed, observed, and are guarded at 6.22 a.m. outside in creation in my area. This is why we say get outside and see this for yourself in your area, as it happens once a month, every month. Guard it like the scriptures say we must, because this event with the three components of the celestial clock, with the sun, full moon, with the stars, occurs once a month, every month. Hallelujah indeed that this spectacular celestial clock from Yahuwah himself, which has three components that work in perfect harmony in a counterclockwise motion. Now, Let's fast forward six months to the fall of 2016 with the first day of the seventh month being on the pagan day Sunday, October 16th, 2016. And look what we see. Yes, the full moon at 100% illumination is now in proximity to the lamb and the sun is in proximity to the branch. Wow! And why the full moon at 100% illumination is ready for the Feast of Trumpets as per the very word as we read in Tehillim or the Book of Psalms chapter 81 verse 3. And this star cluster will be in its proper place in the fall. With this perfect celestial clock year after year as designed and maintained by Yahuwah. And thus why we need no help to number and or count our days from man and his calendar system that hangs on a wall. Because scriptural verse after scriptural verse aligns with this celestial calendar model and why man's calendar model that hangs on a wall does not. And as such, why and when the Messiah Yehushua participated in this festival and all others? Just read the book of Yehukanan, John, chapter 7, to understand what he did during this set apart fall feast of Yehuah. Impressive, isn't it? So again, the night before New Moon Day for the first day of the seventh month at approximately 7 p.m. in my area on the pagan day, Saturday, October 15th, shows the same repetitive pattern as a clock would. The moon is starting to rise above the horizon in the east, while the sun is setting in the west. And as previously shared and seen, we will see this for the first day of the seventh month in the fall. Yes, perfect alignment on the celestial clock that no man 
can manipulate. And, once again, New Moon Day on the first day of the seventh month. We can see the full moon at 100% illumination. Greeting the sun. As the sun announces New Moon Day, and in this case, the first day of the seventh month. Again, this only happens once a month, every month. And if you were outside, this is what it would look like at sunrise at approximately 7.35 a.m. in my area. But it was much more spectacular with the landscapes and the water. This is for sure. So if you want to feel young, refreshed, and amazed, just go outside and let the Father of Lights dazzle you. Because the Word and the lights from the Father of Lights with His celestial clock are true and in alignment. Hallelujah! And as such, why Yahuwah's Son, the Messiah Yahushua, is in complete alignment with His Father. Because this celestial clock was designed to reveal in the light the appointed times of Yahuwah in which the Messiah Yahushua is fulfilling. This celestial clock with the sun, full moon, with the stars has us gathering together as one three times a year in the light with the appointed times and our feasts of spring, summer feasts, and the fall feasts. Remember, the appointed times of Yahuwah are a dress rehearsal of the spiritual harvest cycle, so to speak. It is no surprise, then, that the celestial clock is aligned with creation's agricultural harvest cycle. So there will be no surprise the night before New Moon Day for the first day of the 10th month, which is the pagan day Wednesday, January 11th, as this delirium visual highlights. Because this is what we will see in my area at 5 p.m., because this celestial clock repeats its pattern as a reliable quality timepiece would. Notice the position of the moon rising in the east, which will be seen for the whole night, which happens only one night a month, while the sun is setting in the west. And notice at midnight, or the start of the seventh hour, the third watch, that the Big Dipper is right where it is supposed to be on this celestial clock for this time of season in the winter. And at 7.52 a.m., sunrise at the pagan day of Thursday, January 12, 2017, the full moon at 100% illumination is setting in the west, but not before it greets the sun, which is rising in the east right at the horizon, announcing another wonderful new moon day, this being the first day of the 10th month. Once again, another month with perfect, harmonious alignment of the three components in the heavens that no man can manipulate with the sun, full moon, with the stars of Yahuwah's celestial clock working together as one to pinpoint day one of each and every month. Wow, indeed. Of course the scriptures are true. And of course what creation celestial clock does in a precise, repetitive manner is true. And thus both combined are trustworthy and reliable to accurately meet the appointments of Yahuwah. So we now know further just why the Greek word cosmos identifies the system on earth which has been established apart from the Creator Yahuwah. Since this world's wall clock and calendar system and its source is Satan. Why? Because it is designed to produce debt, darkness, and death. And we challenge anyone to argue and or debate this simple, well-known fact of what this timing piece does. Because really, how much time does the world and its world religions marvel at the work of Yahuwah's fingers, which produces liberty, light, and life? Yahuwah and his celestial timepiece is for his signs, appointed times, days, and years. This isn't rocket science. The differences are obvious. 
Feel free to stop the video again. Ensure your computer screen is on full screen and really study and reflect on the information that you see before you, which if you demonstrate just a little integrity and honesty, you will know this to be true. You do not have to be part of man's clock on a wall team here on earth that feel that they must salute and remain part of the so-called guardians of the Gregorian Babylonian movement which has forced their time measurement system upon us all. Have you ever read the parable of the Ten Maidens? This parable may help to shed further light on the scriptural event that is about to take place. In a high-level summary, five of the Ten Maidens were prepared. They knew the word. They took the time to learn it out in creation, and more importantly, applied it in their lives. They were prepared with all essential oils to ensure they could keep their lamps lighted in order to walk in the light. Five of the ten maidens were not wise. In fact, they were foolish. They did not believe it to be prudent to take the time to learn the word as it works in creation, and as such did not believe it was wise to apply it in their lives. They were satisfied with man's clock on a wall, these five are not prepared with all essential oils and much to their own detriment walk in the dark. And as the scriptural parable foretells, the five maidens that are not prepared will not get access to the wedding feast. And to this day, only a very few understand fully why the last shall be first and why the first shall be last. So do not be surprised then that every world religion promotes and or sells the darkness in their own way, but in the same manner with a conjunction or crescent moon dark system. This does not mean you have to buy it. Is this one of the reasons why many are called, but few are chosen? In either case, there is no doubt we must come out of her. And these world religions all through time have ensured that everyone is not aware of just how the scripture speaks in a negative manner towards the Babylonian crescent moon belief system. Read the following scriptural passages in this visual that share this, because it is also extremely easy to prove historically and scripturally that watchmen on the wall were not dispatched and are tasked with looking for the first visible crescent. They were there to protect the city from unwelcomed intruders, period. The 100% full moon illumination event with the stars of the Big Dipper and others in their proper place and with the sun announcing New Moon Day happens one day a month that everyone can see. Hanuk or Enoch stated this because he was only writing in an accurate astronomical fashion about what happens in the Shamayim that anyone can observe. The astronomer Hanuk also was aware that the monthly 100% illuminated full moon event was when the full moon was being a seventh part of the light of the sun. And why Yashayahu or Isaiah in chapter 30, verses 26, confirmed the very same thing. And why we indeed blow the shofar at the full moon on our festival day, just like the scriptures state that we must. Because, as we have seen, the moon and the stars have been established as stated in scripture and as well in the heavens or Shemaim. And a sign is made to be seen by all. It needs no watchman. The moon was established forever, and this sign and her witness is steadfast for all generations, just like Scripture stated it would be. Even the writings from the Apocrypha write about what can actually be seen in the heavens. In all scriptural writings, even the ones that man has decided not to be part of the present-day canon, they share that the full moon represents the true light of the first day of every month of the celestial clock. And these writings even share the purpose of the celestial clock. 
just like the books of Bereshith or Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 16. They also share as well that the full moon would be at the time of the feast, just like the psalmist stated that they would be. Just as the celestial clock of Yahuwah moves counterclockwise from east to west, so will it be with the coming of the son of Adam. Hallelujah! What consistency! And oh, what precision of alignment exists between the scripture and the heavens. But so it is with the word and its perfection of the three components of the celestial clock of Yahuwah with his son, full moon, with the stars. Because this celestial clock is obedient to the service for which they are sent. And that is... For signs, appointed times, days and years of Yahuwah, just like it is shared in the book of Bereshith or Genesis, chapter 1, verses 14 through 16, etc. While the world's clock that hangs on a wall is designed and established to ensure the traditions of men are protected while attempting to abolish the way of Yahuwah. But hallelujah! Yahuwah is indeed in control, and the truth has not been lost about his set-apart days, even though man has done everything possible to attempt to usurp them. But foolish man, as influenced by the present spirit of the air, cannot hide the celestial clock of lights from the Father of lights, let alone hide its purpose. So let us all not decline the call any further. Let's accept the call. We continue to pray that these scriptural studies provide value to you and your loved ones. As always, feel free to critique these scriptural studies with other scriptural witnesses in the YouTube comments section. Let alone feel free to request any of the visuals, as we will send them free of charge from our email address or Facebook page. Until next time, Yahuwah willing, all the best in the name which is above all names.